Hi, welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. We are looking at knitting for profit today. I'm going to give you three tips to make sure that you do make that profit and that your knitting is worth all the time and effort, the experience that you put into it. Hi, welcome to Knit with Hannah. I'm Hannah. I'm here with Knitting Natter to help you learn to knit the easy way. I am talking about knitting for profit today and we are going to take a look at three tips about how you can make sure that it really is worth your while putting your time and your effort and like I said it's your experience and your talent as well that goes into the knitting that you inevitably want to sell. But first of all if you're new here I will be talking about this again. So make sure that you've subscribed and let me know in the comments below whether you've knitted for profit below before or whether you this is your first time out and you really want to get it right first time. Okay, let's look at those three tips then. Okay, tip number one is to use good quality yarn. You want to charge an item, charge for an item that is not only made with talent and experience, you've put thought into the design, the colours, how your collection goes together, but also your customers want to pay for good quality materials. You want really good quality yarn. So really think about it. Look at all of the options. Take Take an afternoon off and go to your local yarn shop. Really have a look at what you can do. And also maybe even go through a few websites online and look at the reviews to see how other people have found that it knits up and that it works well or not long term. Really think about the yarn that you're using because people are paying for you to knit. They're going to give you premium price so they want premium materials. Okay, the second point is consider your time and experience. I've already said this already. However, the time that you put into it is your experience. This is what you would call in other um, professions experienced labor. It is professional labor. You may be knitting on the sofa and you may even have Netflix on while you're knitting. You may sit there and really be enjoying your garden or you're watching your children play. But you find it easy. Other people look at it and marvel. They're astounded at how you create fabric with a pair of needles and a ball of yarn. This is a talent. It is an experienced talent. No matter how long you've been knitting for, you've put time and effort into learning and you put time and effort into knitting each piece. So appreciate your time just as much as your customers want to appreciate your time and your talent as well. Time how much time, work out how much time it costs for you to make each item and charge at least £10 an hour. If you're in the United States, that will be $12 or $15. In euros, it will also be about $15, uh, 15 euros. Um, and in Australia, I think about $15 or $20. You know, really consider how much time you've put into learning. And all of that time that you've put into learning has to go into these final pieces. Okay, so the third thing is about niching. If you want to start selling your knitting, you really need to start creating small collections within niches. For example, you could be the person who sells children's hats and scarves. That's it. You don't sell anything else. Maybe occasionally for Christmas, you design two pairs of mitts and that's it. You add them to that. But you don't do baby items. You don't do ladies and men's hats. You only knit for children between the ages of four and ten. That's it. If, it. if it doesn't fit them, then you say, sorry, I haven't got it. You need to go and find it somewhere else. That's that. Done. It means that people know to come to you for those items. They're not going to be kind of like asking, asking you all over and over and over again. Oh, I can't remember whether you knit that or do you knit that or do you knit that? because they will know that you only knit children's items and they will only fit children, likely, between the ages of four and ten. That's it. You don't have to worry about all of the yarns that aren't relevant to that collection. You don't have to worry about the colours that aren't relevant to the collection that you've created. Really niche down, really think about the niche that you can start to create. What do you really love to knit? 
what is it that your heart skips a beat if you say, oh, I'm going to knit a bubble hat, I'm so excited. Or do you get really excited when you say, I'm going to make a, knit, a pair of fair old mitts this weekend. I love knitting these. Well, if you knit them really quickly because you love knitting them so much, maybe that's what you need on your table. What do you love knitting and how can you create a niche that everybody knows they need to come to you for when you finish your knitting and when they want to buy those items? Okay, I hope that's been helpful. That's three tips for profitable knitting. Now, do stick around over the next few weeks because I am creating more of these videos about profitable knitting. I know when I started knitting, I wasn't even thinking about it. But once I'd knitted so much stuff for myself and my family, I thought, how can I keep on knitting and really enjoy it still? Well, actually, it came to me that I had to start selling it as well. So if that's what you're thinking, you may be thinking about it for now. You may be thinking about maybe doing that in six months' time. Well, come back. If you subscribe and hit the little bell, then you'll get notifications that the video is ready for you next week. And I'll be all here ready with more tips on how to make your knitting profitable. All right, then, I will see you then. Bye for now. Happy knitting.